Happy, happy Sabbath, church. I send you greetings from King Jesus. Amen. I would like to thank the singers for their angelic voices singing Amen. praises to God. Amen. I would also like to thank the church pastor, the church elders, the possibility ministry, and the entire church for allowing me this opportunity to stand on this podium. Amen. I would also like to thank my mother for that amazing song she sang. Amen. And to all my family that came to support me Amen. on this special day. Amen. Please pray for me. So God Almighty, for he to use me as a microphone to speak the word of God and for he to help me to stand on my two feet. Let us pray. The almighty living God, your name is Jehovah. Your name is El Shaddai. Your name is Elohi. Use me as your microphone to speak the word of God. Help me to stand on my two feet. May your angels descend from heaven. May they come and fill all the chairs in this church. And may we sit on angels' laps. I pray this in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. 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 Empowered by the Spirit, we are going to be embracing for the disabled within our community. Amen. Beloved congregation, beloved Stoke Newington, as we dwell into the depths of today's sermon, let us not forget the powerful truth that guided Jesus through his earthly ministry. Empowered by the Holy Spirit at his baptism, Jesus embarked on a mission. A mission that transformed lives, society norms, just as Jesus needed the empowerment of the Holy Spirit for ministry fulfillment, especially for the disabled. So do we. You see, my dear friends, the empowerment of the Holy Spirit allows us to see beyond the, the limitations that society imposes. It is through this empowerment that we realize that the world must give everyone an equal opportunity to live fully. Yet this is ideal often faces challenges, challenges that seem inconceivable at times. One such a challenge is the experience of disability. Church, consider this. One billion of the population of the people are with disabilities. 80% live in developing countries, an estimated 60% of older people aged 60 years and over are people with disability. And shockingly, one in every five women are people with disability. While every 10, one in 10 children is a child with disabilities. As we honour this year's Disability Week, I urge each and every one of us to take action. Let us simply not acknowledge the statistics, but let us actively engage in making a difference in the lives of the disabled with disabilities within our community. Yes. Here are some practical steps we can take. 
we can identify with disabled individuals within our faith community. Our faith community is Stoke Newington. Let us extend a heartfelt invitation on each Sabbath from this day forward. Let us rally our church community to provide them with access to church facilities, access to transportation, ensuring that they can reach us without any barriers, access to education and items that can empower them. From this day forward, let us go above and beyond. Let us simply provide them with wheelchairs or any other aid with physical challenges or vision impairments. Let us visit them. I, let us visit them with items that will truly make a difference in their lives. And most importantly, let us invite them into our worship space. This is approach. We are going to read a story of how a family attended to Baptist Church in Danvale. A family attended to Baptist Church in Danvale who were yet refreshingly filled with a love with those who are disabled. They saw the death which a sign language interpreter was provided. They also saw those with some sort of mental handicap and a range of physical challenges. During services, they will see the deaf moving in communication uncontrollable body movements in those with physical impairments or outbursts of laughter or strange sounds with those with a mental issue. Before moving to Tanville, they actually pastored a church where both the blind and the deaf attended services. Our sister, Jonah Harrison Tarla says, the fact that they think the fact but disabled people hang in there, does something for Christians. They themselves may feel like they are a burden to others. They themselves may feel like a burden to God. But God doesn't think that. Amen. He thinks that you are bright. He thinks that you are amazing. Today, we are going to read a story of how a blind man was able to challenge the disciples and the crowd of people who are following Jesus. Let's open our, our holy textbook to the book of Mark, chapter 10, 46 to 49. Then they came to a place called Jericho. As Jesus and his disciples, together with a loud crowd, were leaving a city, a blind man, Bartimaeus, was sitting by the roadside begging. When he was heard of, it was Jesus of Nazareth, he began to shout, Jesus, son of David, have mercy upon me. 
Many rebuked him to be quiet, but then he shouted to all more, Son of David, have mercy upon me. Jesus stopped and said, Call him. So then they called the blind man and said, Cheer up on your feet. He is calling you. The crowd accused him of to his daily panhandling, had probably hoped to pass by without any commotion. But they were quickly disappointed. As Bartimaeus was an old, known, too familiar nuisance, and an embarrassing sight in front of visitors. Therefore, the crowd quickly snapped at him to be quiet. So, church, why was Bartanius sitting outside of the city walls? The answer can be found in the Book of Lamentations, chapter 4. We read about the prophets who sinned against the Lord. They wandered blind in the streets. They cried out to them, Go away, go away, unclean. Do not touch us. When they fled, they said, They shall no longer dwell here. Not only was he considered unclean, but he was viewed as being strange. When people saw him, they thought, Oh no, it's blind Bartimaeus again. The, the guy who is always pestering, pestering for money. See, when we meet someone with a condition we don't understand, we put them in a box we close the box and we label the box as strange. This is the way that people with disabilities, vision impairment, physical challenges are often treated. The multitude demanded Bartimaeus to remain quiet, as though he was unworthy of speaking to Jesus. Technically, think about this, all people are unworthy to approach Jesus, for we have all sought and sinned for the glory of God. However, the Bible declares that God, who is rich in mercy, because of his great love, which even he loved us, even when we were dead in our trespasses, he made us alive together with Christ for the grace you have been saved. Amen. You have been saved. We have been saved. Amen. Even if we had a stench of death upon us. Spiritual death that is. Jesus opposed us. We would outstretched arm and called us unto himself. Jesus Christ sees all who are searching for mercy. Hello, church. Jesus Christ is 
looking for. Who is searching for mercy? For whoever calls on the name God, Lord, Father, Jehovah, you are my king, shall, shall be saved. All people is beautiful in the eyes of Christ. Amen. Declared, you are treasured. You are beautiful. You are his. Amen. Including all people. Including the disabled. Amen. Our brother, Robert M. Hansel said, those who are challenged needs to be heard, not to seen as a disability, but a person who has and will continue to bloom. Amen. Jesus Christ saw Bartimaeus as a person who could bloom. In fact, he saw him as being very valuable. His name, Bartimaeus, which means son of Tanius. If we look at his father's name, Tanius, it means honored and highly prized. We read here that Jesus Christ stood still and commanded him to be called. <coughs> Jesus Christ ceased a conversation with his disciples to put off his travel itinerary and took time out of his busy schedule and spoke with Martina. And in doing so, Jesus ascribed him with dignity Amen. and worth. So they called the blind man and said, Be of good cheer. Right! He is called. And throwing aside his garment, he rose and came to Jesus. What shall I, the son of man, the son of God, the son of God, what shall I do for you? What shall I, the son of man, the son of God, the son of the entire universe, what shall I do for you? Then the blind man said to him, Rabbi, that I may receive sight. Then Jesus Christ said to him, Go away, your faith has made you well. And immediately he received sight. He received sight. He received sight. But Hermes was blind. But he received sight. So after Bartimaeus received sight, he followed Jesus on the road. When most people looked at Bartimaeus, when most people looked at Bartimaeus, they could only see his outward trait, such as his daily habit of begging or perhaps sitting on the ground all day, which caused him to have dirty garments. He lack of all his lack of hygiene, as he couldn't take care of himself. Jesus looked past his inner beauty. He looked past his inner beauty. He looked part of his dirty garments. He looked part saying he was blind. And Jesus recognized his deep 
spiritual needs. Bartimaeus was physically blind, but ironically, the crowd said, spiritually blind. Most people in the crowd could not see but over the dark veil over their heart. To view Bartimaeus in a being and work. The Apostle Paul says, Therefore, we regard according to the flesh. Even now we know Christ according to the flesh, yet know thus longer. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, is a new creation. How things had passed away. Behold, all things had become new. Paul emphasized the need of being careful about regarding people according to the flesh. Because they are not the flesh. Why? They are a spirit. The resurrection allowed people to recognize that Jesus Christ was more than the flesh. He is a spirit. He, he, he became a model, a model for a transformed life. Knew by the power of the resurrection, each and every single person in the world has the potential to surrender. Amen. Tom Shakespeare, given a speech at the Mont University in 20. 17. Tom Shakespeare, he himself is a disabled. He was born 11th May 1996, age 57. He is English. His relative is Godfrey Shakespeare. That is his grandfather academic background, Radley College, how matter of Preber College, Cambridge College, King's College, Cambridge, academic work discipline, sociology, sub-discipline, disability rights, Bioethics, institutions, University of Sunderland, Newcastle University, University of Leeds, World Health Organization, University of East Anglia, London School of, Trop of Hygiene and Tropical Medicine, even if you're like blind man Bartimaeus, or like Tom Shakespeare, or even you're like Nana Osei Bonsu Bratidankwa, there is a promise for you. Yeah. On the resurrection morning, we are going to see. Precious Lord, take my hand. Lead me on till we stand. We are tired, we are weak. Precious Lord, take us to heaven. Because once we get there, no more death, no more sadness, no more sorrows, no more disability. Those who cannot see shall see the beautiful heaven. 
Those who cannot hear shall hear the anger, the angels singing in harmony, singing praises to God. Those who cannot walk shall walk on streets of gold. I, Nana, I say, Bonzo Bajitangwa, shall no longer require an EHC plan for my secondary school education. My mother will no longer have to worry about writing emails upon emails, joining meetings upon meetings. By the power of Jesus Christ, I shall walk properly, and I shall walk on the streets of God. Heaven knows wonder where we are going. We know we will get that one day. But our victory crown, our victory crown awaits us. Okay, here's another Bible text. Second Corinthians chapter 15, 53 to 55. For the perishable, must clothe itself with the imperishable and the mortal immortality. Amen. When the perishable has clothed itself with the imperishable and the mortal with the immortality, Amen. then the saying, Amen. death has been swallowed Amen. up in victory. Well, death is your victory. Well, death is your sting. I would say, disability, where is your victory? Where is your sting? Amen. Amen.